at home, make sure that I was passing to be able to compete on the weekends. Uh, once I became a professional athlete, from pretty much March till September, I was traveling all around the world competing. Uh, the majority of our season in the track and field is in Europe. So I'm in Europe and Asia probably half of the time of the year. Uh, wouldn't change it for the world, I've enjoyed it. Um, but as my career went on and all the injuries started coming along, I had to decide what I wanted to do. What I did do smart was I saved all my money. I had an allowance on myself on what I wanted to spend a year. But the rest of it I, I put in um, investments, I put in retirement funds, and I saved up for my future. Uh, I knew I wanted to get married and have kids. And I knew once I retired that there would be a time where probably a year or two where I wouldn't be working. And I wanted to make sure I had income to, sac to be able to still live on what I've made in the past. Um, now that I'm married, before about four, two, two, three years ago, me and my wife were trying to figure out what I wanted to do once I retired. And we decided that we wanted to get into the franchise business. So now we are a franchise owners for Jimmy John's. Uh, we have one location, working on our second location right now. So all the money that I have saved up in the past gave me this opportunity to be a business owner. Now I'm a business owner. I, I work five, five to six days a week there, train, and still take care of my family. So it's a lot of hard work, but you know, in the end, it's enjoyable. I enjoy what I'm doing. I enjoy going in and seeing what my business is doing and, and seeing how it's growing throughout the year, the last year and a half. Um, but it is also hard having to train, trying to find time to train in between there. But I am making good use of my time to where I can train and still work and not be dead by the end of the day. Uh, so really, a lot of the thing that you need to look at is when you get to college or going from high school to college, you gotta figure out what you wanna do in life, what, you wanna, what you're working hard for. Uh, you don't wanna go into college like I did and my only thing was, I just want to run. That's all I wanted to do. If I would have got hurt in college, I would have had no idea what I would have done from there on. Uh, I slacked off in college in the classroom. Uh, I did just enough to get by. But you've got to make sure that you know where, what you're working for when you get to college. Uh, don't be in high school just barely making it, having just graduating high school. You've know, you got to work hard so when you get to college, you already have that set in stone on how to be a good student, how to work hard, how to be dedicated, and how to make sacrifices. Um, it's, it's not an easy path, but it does work out. You know, you have to stay confident in yourself. You have to be positive. You can't just say, oh, it's not working out. I'm going to try something else. You know, if, this, if that's your dream, if that's your goal is to, to re get way up here, then you have to continue to strive for it. You're going to take steps back to be able to get up top. So. If there's any questions from anybody? What's what's the the biggest challenge you've had from to become an entrepreneur? Uh, the biggest challenge was making the transition from as a professional athlete. All I ever did was just run throughout my whole my whole career. It was I'd wake up, go to the weight room, practice, and sit down. That was pretty much all I did. Uh, making that transition, I had to learn how to do. Uh, Paperwork. I had to learn how to run a store, how to manage a business, how to hire employees, how to fire employees, uh, money situations with, you know, making payroll, uh, purchasing all our equipment inside the store, lease, rent, everything. So uh, it was stressful for a while, but you know, once you get the grasp of it, it does catch on and it does make it a lot easier. Why Jimmy Jones? Uh, my wife uh, is an attorney, and she, uh, a lot of the attorneys that she works with are franchise attorneys, and they had mentioned to us that with how much it is to, to buy into Jimmy John's, that the help and support you get out of it is greater than a lot of the other companies out there. Uh, the price point is a lot lower than, say, Chick-fil-A and McDonald's. So that's, we took all that in consideration, and the profit margin, as long as you're following what you're supposed to do, the profit margin is a lot better. When you were at Baylor, 
Are there classes that you wish you had taken, or do you have classes that you suggest that they should take when they go to school? Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to say. I'm still a sophomore in college to this day. I turned professional after my second year, uh, and I haven't actually graduated. I haven't finished out. But uh, I would, what I would recommend doing and what they recommended me to, to do was get all your core classes taken care of early. Because uh, you, once you get those, then you can start working, working towards your major. If you start working on your major early and you decide to change your major, then all those credits that you just took are gone. You lose them all. So work on getting your, your core classes out of the way, and then you can start working on your major. That, by that time, by your second or third year in college, you pretty much figured out what you want to do. Uh, that first year, <coughs> excuse me, the first year is usually just, you know, getting a feel for college, enjoying it, and, and trying to trying to get by, and then after that, you really start working hard and uh, finding out what you want to do. How was the balance for you in college when you were there balancing the athletics and the academic part of it? Uh, you know, with going to a, a uh, private university, it was actually really easy. Uh, they gave us tutors, they gave us support, everything. So whenever we traveled to, to competitions, uh, they had someone there for us. So if we ever missed a test because we had a, we had a travel, we took the test while we were at the hotel. Uh, so we were always making sure we had our grades done, our, our work done. Uh, a lot of professors are um, helpful with the athletes. They know that their schedule is tight. They're at practice either early in the morning or right after classes. And, you know, but we also are we're forced to be in study hall for eight hours a week our freshman year. And then if your grades are good, it drops down to six your sophomore year. And then after that, you're on your own. Uh, so having that study hall really did help. And that's where we got our tutor work. We got our homework done. Um, but you know, it does not give you that time to relax. You know, you're going to class, you're going to practice, and then you're having to go to study hall. So from basically the last two hours of the day, you know, you're just you're winding down and finally relaxing. Are you planning on working in sports after you retire? Uh, yeah, right now I'm also a volunteer coach at Baylor on the track team. Uh, so when I am in Waco training, I'm actually helping the team that's there. I've helped recruit a couple athletes uh, in the last, the last two years I've been trying to get. Uh, so my, my, my dream would be to go into coaching, uh, whether it's college, uh, professional, or high school, I'm not really sure yet. Um, <clears throat> but that is something I've always wanted to do. Even before I got to college, I always wanted to become a coach somewhere. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm working for. I've, I've learned so much from my coach, who's been coaching track and field for uh, about 55 years now. Uh, he's 83 this year. So uh, he is still coaching. He retired from head coaching in 2006, but he is now one of the top recruiters or top uh, positions at Baylor for a track and field. Uh, so I've learned a lot from him over the years. As an athlete, I'm, I'm the type of athlete who asks a lot of questions. Whether I already know what the answer is, I still ask him what, why we're doing the specific workout, what it benefits for me. Uh, I've always learned that in the, in the future that helps me because I know when he's not around and I have to get a workout done, I know why I'm doing the specific workout. And it goes the same into my, into my franchise. I ask a lot of questions to the corporate and uh, or my business coach so I can learn and um, figure out what I'm doing wrong what I need to improve on, and it all just helps out at years down the road. Has your relationships with like Clyde Hart and Michael Johnson, have they played a big role into your life of like um, how you run your maybe your franchises or how you uh, still go about your daily life? This is uh, this is Coach Enright. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, a, a little bit, yeah. Uh, you know, Michael Johnson was my agent, and uh, he was my mentor. He would, he's, was the world record holder in 400 until this past Olympics. Uh, and learning a lot of, lot of things that I learned from him, and we had the same coach, it, it does help me in, in other things. I was raised, the way I was raised was, you know, everything is done a certain way. 
supportive, and I feel like the way my parents raised me is what really helped me more for, you know, running my business and, you know, being on time, being, being, uh, not being disrespectful to other people, um, you know, being patient with some people. Some people take longer than others to catch on things, and that's what you gotta learn with certain, with certain people is how they <coughs> adapt to different situations. Uh, I've had employees that take two or three weeks to learn how to how to make one sandwich, and I've got some that take like ten seconds to learn. So um, you know, it's just learning, filling filling out the situations you're in, asking questions, figuring out how they learn, and what's the best way to help them. Uh, I've just that's how I've raised that way. It's it's been helped me with my career and helped me with where I'm at now. What was it like when you won the gold? I mean, uh, well, how do you, how can you even express that when you cross the line? And it, it's 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 an amazing feeling. Uh, I didn't. I mean, I was 20 when I did it, uh, so it never really caught on at that time. But the first thing that I said when I saw my coach was, "I broke the school record." So the school record was like 44-1 or 44-2. I ran 44 flat that year. So you know that was bigger to me than winning the gold medal. But now that I look back on it as as I'm older, uh, you know it means more to me now than it did then. Uh, you cherish little things like that. Uh, you know, just seeing all the hard work that I've done for all the years, dealing with injuries, the first my freshman year in college, and then getting through those, and then going into the Olympics as technically an underdog, even though I had the fastest time in the world going in. I still wasn't considered the favorite. And to just go out there and run my race the way I was taught, the way I trained hard for it, the way I did all year, uh, you know, it, it pays off at the end. They're going to be going places. Mm -hmm. What pushed you when you started going places? Uh, just knowing that anything's possible, and especially in, in, as a professional athlete, you know, the years are limited. Uh, you see a lot of professional athletes, like football players, baseball players, they get injured and they're done. With. Um, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta grasp it as long as you can. You gotta work hard for it as long as you can because it will be over at some point. And you gotta work hard to look for the future for what's gonna happen if something happens. So I always worked hard, knowing that if I tore my hamstring, that could be my career. I have to be able to make sure that I'm set for later on in life and figure out what I want to do for later on in life. So if that does happen, I'm not sitting there wondering what am I going to do. Uh, so you know, you got to learn. You got to figure out each step of, of your life. What do you want to do right now? What are you working hard for? And then what are you looking, looking to do once you retire? Uh, just you know, making a lot of money and spending it. Uh, I've seen a lot of professional athletes, personally I've seen it, that they make millions and millions of dollars and then four years later when they retire, they're broke. And that's because they try and compete with other people who make more money than them and trying to keep up with them when they're either going to a club, buying cars, buying houses. They want to keep up with them instead of seeing what's in their lane and not worrying about what other people are doing. And that's why they go broke four years after because they've spent all their money on worthless possessions. We've got a bunch of athletes in here. What are your thoughts on cross-sport cross, cross sport training? I grew up playing five, six sports. Uh, high school, I played three sports my first two years, and then I dropped down to two my junior and senior year. Uh, college was the first year I actually only played one sport. Uh, I did have multiple scholarship offers to play football and, and track and field in college, but I knew that I wouldn't make it past college in football. I knew in track and field I had a, a, a long career. Uh, so that's why I chose this to do one sport. But, you know, doing multiple sports is actually benefiting you in, in sports and in life. Uh, in sports, because when you play multiple sports, you're, you give certain parts of your body rest. Uh, so knee surgeries won't be as, as common, uh, hamstring tears, anything like that. When you just put, do one specific sport growing up your whole life, you don't get certain ligaments, certain joints rest. So you, there's, there's been a study that 
kid, athletes who only do one sport early on in life, they have a tendency to have more surgeries early on than they would later on. Uh, and the ones that play multiple sports, they don't get hurt until, until they get older. Uh, so playing multiple sports does help. It also helps you figure out, uh, you know, how to be how to be successful, how to, how to work with a team, especially in team sports, but as an individual sport, it helps you figure out who you are as a person, uh, how hard you work when you're at practice, how hard you work in the classroom when you're, when you, when you're in school. Uh, so it benefits you as you get older for going into your career. We, all this entire class took sports and entertainment marketing before they took this class. So being a sponsored athlete, What's it like working with an Adidas company, and how does how did that benefit you? How did you know what was it like? I mean, in terms of helping promote you and ge up and gear you up and things like that. So you know, it's great knowing that. I mean, since 2004, I haven't had to buy a pair of, pair of shoes, pair of clothes, minus what I, my personal casual wear, but uh, <laughs> athletic wear, tennis running shoes, basketball shoes, any type of shoes I wanted, they would, I just asked for it, they would send them to me. Uh, so it's, it's been great knowing that I haven't had to spend money on clothes, but uh, just, you know, getting getting free things, getting to be able to be in commercials for, for whether it was Dick's Sporting Goods or for Adidas. You know, they partner up with certain stores that want to uh, sell a certain part of their clothes. And those most of the time, they try and get at athletes for that sport, but a lot of the time it is models that they just use, they just throw in there. But when they do get the athletes and we get the chance to do it, it's actually real fun. It takes, we're out there for like two or three days doing the right one photo shoot. Um, it depends on how long it takes you to figure it out. Um, but it's, it's great. I mean, just traveling the world as a professional athlete, but also doing the commercials. You know, I've had to fly to, I've had to fly to Rome for one commercial and then LA to another one. So it's all over the world. But, um, you know, it's, it's something that I'll, I'll cherish. And, Questions? Someone got something? School wise, job wise, anything? Matt, you got anything? I just say, you know, one of the things I know that uh, kids struggle with these days when things become tough, you know, or, or when it's when it's hard, they don't always persevere. Um, so, what advice would you have for these kids when things become tough or when they, you know, doesn't look like they're going to be able to do it? Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, you, you, you've got to be confident in yourself. You know, once you, once something goes backwards, you got to be able to fight for, fight through it, knowing that it, you will be able to get to that, that spot, especially if that's something that you desire to do. Uh, if you're working hard for something and it's not working out, you got to find little ways to get around that to be able to be successful. Uh, like, for instance, as a, as a business owner, you know, finding employees is, is extremely hard, especially in the area of my, my store is in. Uh, you know, I'm running through delivery drivers every month. I'm having to hire five to six new ones. Uh, but it's stressful. And at times, I just wanted to just say, you know, let's just sell the store and, and do something else just because trying to, trying to make sales, trying to make profit in it, it's, it's rough. The first six months, you know, I was losing money trying to pay bills, pay employees. I was taking money out of my personal account just to be able to pay my employees. But I knew that if we worked hard at it and we started get, getting people uh, their sandwiches quicker than what we were doing, that our sales would go up and then our profit would go up and I would be able to repay myself back and benefit from it as the years go on. Uh, it's just the first year, so I can't really quit right away. You know, you got to work hard through it, uh, but it all depends on on your self esteem, on your confidence. You know, if you if this is something you desire to do, you will find ways to get through it and, and be successful in that. Being an athlete, did do you enjoy like or I guess do you enjoy the grind of working out? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the one thing I've always enjoyed running. Um, as much as it hurts at practice, as much as it is painful uh, dealing with injuries, it's something that I love to do. When I am on the track, everything in my life is put on pause for however long I'm on the track, whether it's practice or meets. Uh, you know, just 
being able to put my life on hold for a little 